Good. Hey, Mattia. Thanks so much for joining me, man. Hey, Yanis. Uh, nice to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation and uh, looking forward to chatting. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's, uh, let's kick it off. So, would you like to share some information about your personal background and how Wasplan got started? Sure. Yeah, of course. I can just give you maybe a quick intro and, you know, we can dive deeper into some parts uh, which might be interesting. Yes, so, sir. super shortly about me. My background is computer science, uh, so kind of, you know, finished everything here in Zagreb, in Croatia. Did a couple of internships, uh, kind of from more academic projects, like in Singapore, in bioinformatics. Uh, then I was working in one company in Noom. And then actually after university, I started working on, you know, like projects, startup projects with my twin brother, Martin. And, you know, we kind of held together for the last couple of years. Had one company before we started Wasp. And yeah, Wasp is, you know, the, com the combination of all our experiences. You know, which we had building different web applications and, and projects. So yeah, that was about me and just super shortly, you know, about Wasp. <clears throat> so you can think of Wasp as a Rails-like framework for building full stack web apps with uh, Prisma, Node.js and React right now. So we are, you know, we are looking to offer that uh, better is included experience, you know, like opinionated the best practices out of the box. You know, we just offer like a lot of building blocks and the glue between your you know, typical custom code, but you can still, you still have the full flexibility of uh, writing your own code. Awesome. So yeah, right now, kind of, <laughs> yeah, we have a couple, you know, we have users coming in. We just we just launched beta a couple of months ago, and you know, like a new version a couple of weeks ago. So it's been quite exciting. Yeah, congratulations! Awesome. Let's let's go, man. This is this is an exciting time. And uh, is there maybe something to highlight about like new contributors coming in? Uh, some of the new traction we have, yeah. Yeah, I think exactly in the last couple of months, uh, you know, we, we saw like a really big uptake in traction. So I'm not sure. I think there is no like one single thing to attribute it to. Mm -hmm. I think it is just a combination of, you know, the product becoming more mature. Plus, you know, we kind of started maybe, maybe marketing it a bit differently. And I can also explain, you know, what is the difference compared to before. But I think just, you know, that comparison to, you know, saying, oh, this is, you know, similar to Rails, providing that same, you know, the same seamless experience. I think that's what people are interested in. Plus, you know, the amount of features that we are offering right now is probably also pretty alluring, you know, to developers that want to build quickly with best practices. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And today, are you trying to focus your conversations within the team with a specific group of uh, users or is it pretty generic, you know? Um, how do you approach that? Yeah, I mean, we are seeing different stuff. I would say, you know, like one thing is, of course, like, you know, we kind of follow the stage of the product. So now we are in beta, of course, which is, you know, much more mature with Alpha. And we actually have first users in production. Some of them even launch, you know, their SaaS and startups projects. And they are even making money, you know, with their companies uh, built, built on top of Wasp. But of course, you know, like there is still a decent amount of uh, features to add before we call it 1.0. So I would say, you know, it's a natural progression, you know, from MVPs and, you know, just kind of toy projects to side projects and SaaSes. So now we are seeing more and more, uh, we can say, serious projects which actually have users and, you know, people even make money on top of them. Awesome. And and today, you know, you already mentioned you're working on this with Twin Brother, which is, uh, you know, pretty amazing, actually. We'll let's hear more about uh, this dynamics later on. Uh, have you taken any steps to also grow the team since uh, the early stages? Or Yeah, uh, currently there is six of us, including uh, me, me and Martin. So four, four people who, you know, are not, are not uh, the founders. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we went through YC about a year and a half ago, and basically that gave us funding to, you know, widen the team and, you know, get first people on board. Lovely, lovely. And then today, you know, like basically the next milestone you already mentioned, 1.0, like, is there a specific timeline you might like to share what those steps would be like? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's hard to say an exact timeline, of course, but I think, you know, let's say in about a year, maybe even less, you know, we could already be in 1.0. But you know, I think I think for us, even like, I mean, technically, maybe it's 1.0, but, you know, from the, let's say, community adoption side, we are just looking to kind of build the best product possible. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe maybe we, are, maybe we are still going to be in beta, but we just want to make sure that, you know, like people really want what we have and that we are offering, you know, what they actually need. So I think even then just building out all the features, so this is what we are focusing on much more, you know, just the, providing the right ergonomics, the right features, you know, like targeting the right use case. So that's you know what keeping us uh, kind of keeping us awake most of most of these days. <laughs> uh, what would you say is the biggest challenge you've experienced so far? Uh, you know, as maintainers, and then how you also handle forming the roadmap with uh, your community users. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, it looked differently, you know, when we just started, it was just, you know, the two of us and basically no, no community, nobody to give us feedback. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so we actually went out there and we started actually looking for, for feedback. So I think that was one of the, you know, things that we did well. Like we really tried even before we had a product, uh, we already made the landing page, you know, put it on Reddit, Pro Hunt, and that gave us some initial feeling how people are, you know, what is the reception of, of the message we are getting. So we could quite early start adjusting it. So, you know, we saw with, with us adjusting the message, we could see more and more traction and we are still doing this. So I think that was super interesting. And now with, you know, we have a bit more mature community. We have actually contributors, people giving us kind of continuously, you know, what they, what they want to see next. So still, like, we still have, of course, a lot of control and we can decide what to do next, but it's just super useful to see what are others excited about. So in the end, it ends up, I, I would say, quite aligned. Nice, nice. And, uh, you know, how does it feel like compared to, you know, previous startup experience? I don't know if that was open source. Um, yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was like in totally different branch. It was in like, you know, typical SES in public speaking. So that, that was also fun. But, you know, we kind of, let's say, kind of randomly ended up in, uh, you know, event industry, like public speaking industry. So that was fun because, you know, we had a problem we are solving. But on the other hand, ourselves not being experts in public speaking, actually, you know, we are very detached from the event industry. It was much harder, you know, to get feedback for what we are building. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think now, you know, with, with building a developer tool that we would love to use ourselves, you know, be, yes. being developers, I can appreciate, you know, how faster the whole feedback loop is. And how easier, you know, it is to get something off the ground. Your intuition is usually, you know, much more, you know, to the point. <laughs> so, yeah, it is just the whole process is kind of much easier. Of course, it, it is hard by itself to build, a, to build a developer tool, especially a new web framework. But that is another set of, uh, of challenges. And, and certainly it sounds more fun, you know, building something for yourself. Uh, you get to, to yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, at this stage, is uh, monetization of uh, the project? Uh, something that is, uh, you know, on your plate, something you're thinking about, discuss, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something we are thinking about and, you know, we are trying to collect, uh, let's say, as, as much information on this as possible and, you know, kind of position ourselves. Of course, you know, due to the product being in beta, we are still not planning to monetize. So I would say we are going to wait until 1.0, until that. But definitely, you know, we are trying to find, you know, kind of the good avenues for it, learning from other role models. And, you know, mm -hmm. we are even getting some ideas from the community. So definitely something we are thinking a lot about and, you know, trying to get ready once the product is in the stage to support it. Awesome. And, and you know, being early in this stage, uh, we can only, you know, discuss ideas and whatnot. Are there any specific ideas you might like to share at this stage in terms of what it might look like in, um, yeah. Sure, sure. I mean, everything is also you know, public on our landing page. We have, you know, some list of features coming up, the roadmap. And I mean, a lot of stuff is also or, or just in our heads, maybe. But I think, you know, we are mostly excited about this. Uh, so in essence, uh, Wasp is a compiler. You know, it has a, it, it is a language, although it is not like, you know, competitor to, to Java or C++. You know, it is more like a nice JSON for web apps. So that is maybe the good way to think of it. But, you know, one benefit of this is that Wasp can support multiple frameworks or, you know, even multiple architectures. So right now, you know, we are going with React and Node, but, you know, we could in the future as easily add like support for Vue on the front end, for example, and I don't know, like you can run maybe Python on the back end. So that's kind of, I think we are pretty uniquely positioned to offer that kind of, you know, let's say polyglot abilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Plus, you know, we can also offer maybe like, you know, like, you know just kind of have, having the layer of compiler, which understands what you are trying to build with your application. We can pre-generate UI forms for you or even some CRUD operations. Like there is a lot of crazy things we can offer in advance because, you know, we have the kind of, we know what you want from us because you told us in uh, our configuration language. That's, that's super interesting. Uh, and, and it sounds right off the bat that it's a, it's a platform with a pretty wide surface area for you know, people to extend it and accordingly the open source model, uh, you know, choosing to go open source, I think uh, it's, it ties in very nicely uh, here. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think we never kind of even doubted it to go open source, you know, just, you know, with building for web and, you know, building on, on shoulders of giants like React, Node and similar, which is everything is open source. We always felt open source is the, the right way to go. Absolutely. Do you foresee this as a uh, a product and, and the community that has the support element, uh, you know, being vibrant within it. I mean, today people that use it, uh, does it occur that they reach out to you for support, potentially a contract? Um, what does that look like? 
Yeah. Yeah. No. Always. Always. I mean, we are getting a lot of uh, you know questions. So I mean, this is why we have a Discord community, mm -hmm. and this seems to be working pretty well for now. So people usually come in, introduce themselves, you know, ask questions, ask for help, for ideas. So we find that very helpful to learn, you know, what's missing, to discover bugs. But on the other hand, also, you know, kind of to be able to communicate uh, with people who are using it. And at this, uh, you know, earlier stage, is it? Do you ever see people asking other people in the community if they could help them practically with, you know, some implementation with a custom solution, or is that something that's not occurring yet? And uh, yeah, I think we, you know, we are seeing glimpses of it. Even mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting. Uh, we had actually we had one member of community who is more experienced helping other members of community. Yes. You know, even even be, even even before we had the chance to actually answer the question, like we could see it was already answered. So that was actually really cool to see. For building things like for for each other, uh, like and I, I'm I'm curious whether in the future because of all the things one can do, yeah, yeah, yeah. wasp right? If uh, community experts could actually, uh, that, you... that could also be a way. Yeah, I think for for now it was mostly about you know like some configuration. Hey, how do I set this up? But I mean, you know, since Wasp is now 90% of you writing Wasp is actually you writing React and Node.js. It's, you know, I mean, any anybody can pretty much contribute. Like you don't need any special knowledge of Wasp to be able to write most of the stuff. That's that's great. That's a lead way to my next question in terms of, you know, the, the first contributors kind of like you already said, you know, you you launched and, and have been telling everyone about your new releases. Uh, who are these people? And or rather, why do you think they contribute uh, to, to your project? Yeah. That is an interesting question, and I know I'm I myself not not always sure why, why somebody contributes, <laughs> contributes. <laughs> especially because I was never kind of before I wasn't like a huge early adopter, you know, of open source products or even like even trying stuff out in beta and similar. So I I'm always in awe of how much effort can some people put into a product which is not even you know let's say ready yet, right? So that, that's something you know which is always super exciting to see. So I think you know it, it is again kind of the start. It is changing, you know, moving from one stage to another. I think initially we had two sets of people. So one set were people who you know just really felt the pain of building uh, web apps quickly, you know, with the current stack and always having to configure, you know, front end, back end, figuring out API in between, which library to use, and similar. So I think there was definitely one current from that side. And on the other side, we had people who were very enthusiastic, you know, about this configuration language approach we are taking. You know, some of them even build their own languages. So, you know, like tried doing something with compilers and similar. And they were just super excited to see application, you know, of that knowledge in some in practice. And so they also got a lot of ideas. And especially if they had web, you know, web development knowledge, that was a, that was a perfect match. They could, you know, both help us with the implementation and propose ideas uh, for features. And in terms of the technology ecosystem and uh, Haskell um, in particular, how do those dynamics play out, especially with the powers that uh, Wasp gives to yeah, extend this stuff? Yeah, yeah. That, was, that, was, that was also quite interesting. We initially wanted to start with C++, but then kind of quickly realized, you know, it's pretty low level and, you know, we don't need that kind of, uh, let's say, power, it's, you know, especially because compiler, it is not real time running. It is just, you know, compiles once and then you have application out. So you, you don't need kind of real time uh, speed. Or, I mean, on the other hand, Haskell is also super fast, but you know, it has garbage collector, which makes life much easier. So, I mean, at first we thought it was going to be really hard to find people who are going to be able to contribute to us, you know? So we kind of expected, you know, may, maybe somebody from somewhere, but like, you know, we don't, really, we don't really know how many people to expect. But in the end, we actually got much more than we expected. I think now we have about 50 contributors, of course, to different extent. But but a decent amount of them could actually get into our code, do something, you know, propose changes. We were positively surprised uh, with the amount of people who could come and even help us write Haskell code. Absolutely, and and it sounds like I can you know contribute by writing Haskell code, but also just purely writing React Node.js code, right? Exactly, exactly. I mean, a good portion of our code is you know templates and uh, like files in React and JavaScript and TypeScript. So I mean, and also documentation is totally the other side. But yeah, yeah, I mean, there is plenty of opportunities, even if you don't know Haskell to contribute to the project. And at this stage, just, uh, you know, looking at your GitHub repository, so over uh, 2.7 thousand stars, and you have like around 250 issues open. Curious how you approach uh, product development. You already said that things are public and the community yeah. is very much involved. Uh, you are six people on the team, uh, in addition to the founders or everyone together. 
uh, all together six yeah all, all together so you know there's a lot of work to be done is there something that you've been doing that you see is working and resonates well that you might like to share as a best practice or mm -hmm. on the flip side if there's a challenge here uh yeah yeah Sure, sure. Yeah, we have been trying a couple of different things. So I, I can share kind of what, what we are doing now and what is working best. So I think first we started, you know, maybe with like a weekly or bi-weekly sprints, mm -hmm. which was okay. But, you know, especially when the project is pretty ambiguous, like, you, you know, you don't have a clear set of features you have to build. And, you know, you are pretty much making up what you're going to build next. Then I think, it, you know, it takes a bit longer time to figure out everything and get something done. You know, a week or two weeks is a pretty short period when you don't have the specification ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of nature led us to more quarterly release cycle. So, you know, especially, you know, once we saw Superbase and others, you know, doing launch weeks, that kind of resonated with us, you know, felt like uh, it was a good way to do it and communicate with uh, basically with the community. So we also adopted that. So mm -hmm. now just a couple of weeks ago, we had our second quarterly launch week. And I think that proved to work really well, you know, like for multiple reasons. One is purely from development side. It, it kind of gives us enough time to both figure out what we are building and then actually build it. You know, plus we can all, we can also test it. And on the other side, I think it's a good amount of time, you know, to bring some news to the community. So it's not something every week, something every day, you know, kind of bothering people, but it's like three months, we are building stuff and now look at all the cool stuff we have built. You can try it out, you can give us feedback and you, know, you can test out the new version of Wasp. So this kind of for now that this seems like a good cadence uh, to follow. Nice, thanks. Uh, thank you for uh, for sharing this. Uh, thank you a lot. Of course, I find uh, you know I find this work nicely for them too. And uh, you know, being open source for for both you guys maintaining the project and for the contributors, it is a superpower being able to build in public. And you know, for the contributors, we we're saying earlier. I mean, you know, why, why are people contributing? Well, you know, they're learning so much faster, right? And their work is right there. And there's, I'm wondering if so far how you might have because you engage your community actively, like in in terms of uh, you know streaming or or content or sort of like uh, engaging in this kind of way and showcasing and building in public in this kind of way. Are you starting to toy with this? What are your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, we are. We are. I wish we would do more. I think there is still a lot of space for progress. But as you said, I think building it in public is uh, super, super powerful. You know, both as motivation for builders and also, you know, just, just to get that kind of energy flowing from and between, you know, the people in the community. So, you know, even just having a kind of launch, public launch week, as you mentioned, it kind of makes you accountable because you have to announce what you are going to build. So I think, you know, this makes us decide on features which are going to have the most effect on people who are going to be using it. So, you know, it's, it's very hard to end up, you know, re rebuilding the compiler in Rust because that sounds sexy, you know, like, because like, you know, in three months, nobody will see the difference if that's going to be your feature, which you will release. That's so I think that is one thing, you know, which keeps us accountable to the, to the public, to people we are, about, we are building. And to your question of streaming and, you know, live events. So we had a couple of community calls and we usually do one, you know, next to launch kind of, Hey, get it, let's everybody get together. Let's see the new features. And again, always more people come than we expect, you know, even when we, when we were just starting out and, you know, had like a couple of people in our community, we had like 20 people maybe on the call in the end. And we were like, wow, like where are all these people coming from? <laughs> <laughs> so that was really exciting. And yeah, I, I, I just recently had an idea. I would like to start building more in public. Like, you know, just take something every day, maybe post my progress on Twitter, and even have some, you know, like Twitch, Twitch stuff. I don't have much experience there yet, but I suspect it could be also pretty, pretty cool. Phenomenal. And, you know, we also with Zaf want to, to start getting in this direction as well. And and thank you for sharing this. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you accountable to it too now that you told me. And Okay. <laughs> that, that already helps. Likewise, uh, likewise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that is, uh, that is phenomenal. From the ecosystem, you know, since starting and today, are there any people that, uh, you follow projects that you've explored synergies with or otherwise someone that you think people should check out outside of us? Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, we are kind of trying to embed ourselves in the ecosystem. You know, it is just useful to see how others are doing stuff, especially, you know, like companies that are, let's say, a couple of, couple of steps ahead of you. You see how they are doing their marketing, getting, you know, reaching to people and similar. But yeah, no, I just like the style of Superbase very much. I mean, we also we also know them personally, even before they were they were famous. <laughs> so uh, we had some connection there. But yeah, I, I think they are just you know like both very good in marketing and very transparent about what they are doing. And the product obviously also seems to be you know working really well and satisfying the users, which is in the end the most important thing. 
So yeah, I just think that. I mean, obviously, I mean, I, I follow a lot of, you know, like uh, web developer influencers uh, sharing every day what they do that is, you know, inspiring, like Dominic from React Fury, for example, is also great to follow, you yeah, know, a, a bunch of people. I'm sure more more will come to my mind. As, as, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think, I think, you know, just being on Twitter, I try not to be too much, you know, not to distract myself, but, you know, just coming maybe for half an hour a day and, you know, seeing what's new and having some communication with somebody, it really helps to feel like you are not alone. And, you know, there are other people also building stuff uh, together with you. Awesome. And uh, in the future, you know, people are going to be saying, oh, follow Mattia. Uh, saying, okay. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I'm, my, theater, my theater game is still young, but I'm trying to kind of, you know, step, step it up. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yes. Uh, tell, tell us just uh, tell me about your logo, which is kind of special. Uh, yeah. Ah, logo. <laughs> yeah, it's the funny story also also behind it. Uh, I mean, how, how we came to it? Wait, I would just take a sip of water. Mm. <laughs> Wait, you have to cut this out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, as you know, as I mentioned, you know, Wasp is uh, Wasp is a compiler in its essence. But how it, how it works is also you know we have a lot of template files like you know that we are actually copying into a project, but we change some parts. You know, for example, maybe name of the function is going to be different or something, but majority of the file is going to stay the same. Mm -hmm. And then you know the same if you use something like Mastich, for example, or any you know template generator they usually have some marks to kind of mark what is going to be variable in the code, what is going to be changed. Okay. So we, we ended up using this, you know, this is our kind of <laughs> symbol for something that has to be changed in the code. So end user actually kind of never sees it. Okay, in maybe in some parts of the code, you even have to use it when, when declaring like Prisma syntax or something. So there is a little bit of it, but I think we decided on it because it kind of resembled the Wasp. You know, if you if you squint enough, like this could be a spike, and this could be like kind of maybe wings or something. <laughs> so it's not it's not super similar, but maybe there is some you know maybe there is some similarity. But yeah, we just like we just like how it looks like, and you know it has these developer symbols. So we we, we just went with it. Yeah, absolutely, it's memorable. I like it. Um, tell us a little bit about what it's like working with your sibling. Uh, and you know, I have, I have a cousin. He's eighteen years old. He has a brother. Nice. Uh, 16 years old and you know i can picture them in the future building something together right so and there's a lot of people like you guys out there so what 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 is that like yeah yeah i'm happy to share i definitely recommend you know working with your twin brother if you have one if you don't then make one <laughs> yeah. no i mean i mean you know they often say it's kind of unfair advantage to, to work with somebody you know for a long time like your brother or i don't know, even even wife if you've been together for for quite a while because it takes a lot of, uh, you know, just a lot of work maybe that you would have to put into forming a relationship you don't have yet with your co-founder, which is super important. If you already have that relationship built before and now you're just you know, capitalizing on it, that kind of helps you to focus much more on other stuff, which is great. So, you know, just, I mean, of course, it doesn't work every way, every time. And, you know, you have to kind of have a match again with the person you are building with. So, you know, don't just take your brother and force him to do your stuff with you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for us, it just kind of naturally worked. You know, Martin was always a bit more, let's say, in the kind of technology side. You know, he was always really good in mathematics and, I mean, at everything on, on that side. And I was always kind of going into, you know, like presentations, uh, you know, writing texts and similar. Although, I mean, we are both developers, but we just had a bit different natural affinities. So, you know, when, when you put us together, you get a pretty oh, good combination. Right. Yes. Yeah, I take care of, you know, like CEO stuff, you know, like pitching, communicating is similar and he takes care of, you know, making sure everything works. <laughs> so, yeah, for us, it works really well, although, you know, we, we are both very involved in everything we, we, what is happening. But it's always good to know that you no know, other person is going to cover, you know, that other side and you can focus on, on your on your thing. I love it. And that's uh, that's well said. When you have that relationship, that foundation already in place, you can focus on on building. And uh, yeah, that's well said and applies to best friends as well, long time best friends. Yes, the best friends, you know, people from childhood or somebody, you know, somebody that you had uh, like, you know, forging experience with, you know, it doesn't even have to be like your whole life, but you know, maybe you had your previous startup for two or three years and it was super tough and you battle tested each other, you know, you can trust each other and, you know, then you are ready to go into the next adventure. I think, you know, just having those shared experiences and having, uh, you know, just trust in each other, that, 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 that's what matters. That's very well said. Um, would you have, you know, from being, you know, head down product today, but the, the experience so far in your career, would you have any advice you might like uh, to share with uh, other people getting started in open source or starting the companies? Yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah, sure. 
No, I think one thing is, you know, what, what we covered before and what, what you also mentioned that, you know, just solving your own problem is always a good start because, you know, the whole feedback loop is much shorter. You know what you're doing. You have intuition. On the other hand, don't be too convinced, you know, because you are just one data point. Make you make sure to get to generalize, to get more input as early as possible what you're doing. So I would say second advice, get feedback as early as possible. And especially in open source, when, you know, there are no kind of patterns, you're not hiding anything. You know, ju just get it out as soon as possible, even with just an idea. Put it on Reddit, make a landing page, ask people, is this a problem for you? So getting feedback as soon as possible. And I think, you know, just kind of open source is in its way a superpower because it's much easier to get, you know, public attention. Everybody is, you know, always supporting of open source because you are building for others, you are giving something away. So it's also a responsibility, of course, like you have to make sure you are transparent, you are taking into account other people's opinions. But I think, you know, if put together and managed well, it can really be you know, amazing driver for, for your, pro your project. 100%. And uh, coupling it with the conversation we had earlier about, you know, content or building in public and, and yeah. showcasing that it can be, it already is the best avenue for people to learn. Uh, but when you also couple that with the community and content aspect, you know, that that can truly be a superpower. Absolutely. Do, do, do you have any controversial opinion? Uh, you know, on the technology side or whatever have you, you might like to share? It's trying something new. Controversial. Okay. I mean, you know, Wasp is in one hand controversial when we say that, you know, we are building a new language for web apps. Everybody said you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why Why would anybody learn a new language? But, you know, on the other hand, I mean, also we, had, we changed our vision, you know, from the very start. But on the other hand, you know, Wasp was never meant to replace other languages. So I think that is one thing that we learned to communicate better. You know, initially we were super excited that Wasp is a new language and we made sure to tell that to everybody like, hey, Wasp is a new programming language. We are building a compiler. And you know, that was very exciting to us, but everybody else was afraid. You know, both uh, users, developers, investors, they were like, oh, come on, when C++ ever made money, right? So it's not it's not the best case to, you know, uh, found your business on. <laughs> So when we made sure to change that messaging, you know, to you know, Wasp is more like Terraform or SQL, you know, it is like a very domain specific language, very simple, you know, just configuration stuff and you still build your thing in React and Node. That's when we started seeing much better, uh, you know, just, you know, results from the community. So I think that that's also maybe one lesson, like don't be afraid to kind of test and, you know, pretty, let's say, change, change your messaging. Maybe, maybe the core doesn't change, but just the angle, you know, which you are looking at it from can change things drastically. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this. It's a, it's a highlight right here. And from a high level, uh, you know, technical standpoint, if, uh, you know, I'd like to, to contribute and answering the why question as well, if you could uh, give us a, yeah, a few sentences, yeah. <laughs> of course. I mean, no, everything is, you know, public on our, on our website or our GitHub repo. So it's bosp-lang.com. You can find all the information there. And if you join our Discord, I think this is the best way to start. You know, just join, introduce yourself, say, hey, I would like to learn more about this and that. And somebody is always there. So we'd be happy you know, to show you the ropes. And yeah, super awesome to have you in the Bospatier community, as we call it.